Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to give you my opinion about the best REST client tool that you can use to consume APIs. Now, we have a lot of tools, we have Postman, Insomnia and many others. Every day when I have to develop an API or where I have to test and debug an API, I always use West Code with a combination of an extension. This kind of combination gives me the best tool possible to work with the APIs. I'm going to show you how to work with West Code plus an extension to test your APIs. It's absolutely easy. I'm going to give you my reasons why I use this tool and why for me is the best. The first reason is that you work always with the same tool. Normally, VS Code is used for development. And staying always on the same tool, it's, it's great because you don't lose time in switching between tools. Secondly, it's pretty easy to configure, to add variables, to add additional endpoint, to test. It's very, very easy. Okay, let's get started and I show you every step. Here I am on my PC. First of all, I'm going to open Visual Studio Code and here we go. Then I'm going to open the extension store. So I'm going here, extension, and then you can type in the text field REST. You will find one of the most used REST client extension for Visual Studio Code. It is this one, REST client. It has uh, 2 million downloads. It's, I think it's the most downloaded. It's an amazing extension that allows you to use Visual Studio Code to consume and make HTTP request. Once you have done that, you can create a folder that looks like with this structure. As you can see here, I created a main folder called the REST client and then below I added additional folders and here I have some get method in order to get a valid access token. As I mentioned, I always use this way to consume the Graph API. The Graph API are a connection bridge that allows you to perform crude operation, create, read, update and delete in the context of Microsoft 365. But you can use this, this way also to consume normal API or other kind of REST API. Now here I have several folders and here I have one very important which is .vs code. Let me open this. Here I have a settings file. I named this settings.js. I'm going to open this one because I have some secret inside. I don't want to share with you the, the app secret and client ID, which are useful to consume the graph API. So this is an example of REST client dot environment variables. In this way, you can differentiate environments. In this specific case, I have several environment. I have this one, this other one, test and prod. On top, I have shared. This means that this variable will be used across environments. And when I switch environment, I will tell to this extension to use these three variables inside. Now, how I can change the environment? So let me just open an example that I have here. This is an HTTP request to get users in Microsoft 365. Clicking on this file, which is a .http file, and this is the file that you need to create to use this extension. As we can see here, I have a normal get request. This is the URL to, to consume the endpoint of the Graph API and get users from Microsoft 365. Here I added this variable, uh, which is the shared variable that we have seen in the settings file before on top. And uh, with this token, I'm able to get access to this and consume this API. Below, I have here some information. This one tell me that I'm using currently this environment, Giuliano Demo. If I click on it, on top, I have this drop down, and here I can set a different environment if I want. I can, I can switch easily from an environment to another, which is pretty cool. 
Now let's use this one. Now let's start to play with it. But let me get a valid token in order to consume the Graph API in this example. Now I'm going to click on this file in order to get a valid token that I will use later to get information and grab all users in my Microsoft 365 tenant. So let me run this post request. In order to do that, you will find here a link send request on top of, of the request. And here we go, this is the response. You have here the response time and you have other additional information about the, the response. Now here we have the access token and this is what I need to consume and go forward with the Graph API. I will copy this and I will place it in the settings.json. Now I just made this step. I'm going to show you this uh, other file that I have here just to figure out what where I passed the access token. I have here this variable shared across environments and basically I passed here the access token. That means that now I can play with the Graph API. So if I go in on this file, I have this get users. So this is the endpoint here. I can add, for example, just a name just to see if this endpoint return me a response. Let me click now on send request and here we go now i am getting all users where the name start with joel and so here we go i have three users here with this with this response but i can add additional uh, all query data parameter or i can just run this users and point to grab all users available in my tenant let me just remove this query parameter i'm going to run now this other query if you want to add more requests on the same page you can just do it hashtag 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 then you will find the link to make this other request so now on the same page i added to get request so i can run this other one and here we go now i am getting all users on my microsoft 365 tenant so I made this example with the Graph API, but it doesn't matter. You can use every API that you want. That's the way to consume and test API. Now under the folder API, I have another thing. I have a normal GET request, and this is going to consume my local host and the API and then function one. This is an Azure function that I have locally. Let me open here Visual Studio, and this is up and running already. This is a normal, uh, it's the standard get post request that you have when you create a, a function in Visual Studio. Now I have this up and running, as I mentioned, I have here the command line. This tell me that this is the endpoint valid to consume this API. Let me now set a breakpoint here just to see if this method trigger. Now let me switch on Visual Studio code and I'm going just to send this request. This is normal guest, and here we go. Now the, the endpoint is triggered. I can see the every parameter sent through the request, so I can expand here the request, and I can find the, the, the method and the, the, the path and many other information. So I can remove now this one. Let me click on continue, so I can see now the response going in Visual Studio Code. Here we go, this is coming up. And I have the, this response, this HTTP trigger function executed successfully. So this is a great way to test also API locally. You can debug easily the API that you are developing. It's a very great way. I stopped use Postman and Insomnia. I think this is a wonderful way to test and play with API by making a HTTP request using VS Code and this extension. Okay, in this video we have seen why I use VS Code plus an extension to consume APIs and why I prefer this use instead of others. If you enjoyed this video, as always, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, comment, like to stay tuned and to see more videos like this one. Thank you for watching, I hope to see you next time, bye!